Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing a very recent announcement in regards to an extremely exciting star system known as TRAPPIST-1, but this time with the data coming from the James Webb Space Telescope. Because after months and months of analysis, the scientists finally have a confirmation. A confirmation in regards to one of the planets in the TRAPPIST-1 system. But in this case, maybe a somewhat negative or somewhat sad confirmation. It looks like at least one of these seven planets, terrestrial planets, definitely does not have any atmosphere. And definitely seems to be a somewhat barren world, potentially very similar to Mercury, and very different from what the scientists were hoping to find. Very different from a terrestrial planet like Earth, or maybe at least like Venus. And so in this video let's discuss some of the details of this discovery, and what this means for the future of astronomy, and the future discoveries coming from the James Webb, but also future discoveries coming from very similar planets. But I guess first a very quick reminder. So a few years ago, one of the biggest announcements coming out of NASA was the discovery of a 7-planet star system approximately 40 light years away from us. But in this case what made this particular star system really exciting is the fact that all of these planets seem to be terrestrial, not so different from planet Earth in terms of mass, size, and density as well. And this implied one thing. It implied that at least some of these planets, maybe one, two, or even three, could potentially host conditions necessary for life to evolve. Especially because at least three of these planets were located far enough from the star itself where technically liquid water could exist. The region we often refer to as the habitable zone. And since the original discovery, this particular star system became a prime candidate for trying to figure out whether these types of stars would actually be perfect for a potential discovery of a habitable Earth-like planet. Mostly because these types of stars, known as M-type stars, also known as red dwarfs, are extremely common in our galaxy. There are approximately 10 times more of these types of stars compared to G-type stars like our Sun. And on top of this, they also have a very high chance to have terrestrial planets. Or essentially planets that are somewhat rocky, potentially Earth-sized, and thus have a high chance to have liquid water. With current analysis suggesting that the M-type stars are approximately twice as likely to contain terrestrial planets compared to even a Sun-like star. Which basically means that about 95% of all Earth-sized rocky planets might be around a red dwarf. And since this particular red dwarf was discovered to have seven planets in seven different regions around the star, this literally became the prime candidate to try to understand all of this. But as of today, due to the lack of observations, most of the analysis so far has been kind of mathematical. If we go back a few years, there are actually videos on the channel almost contradicting themselves. Some studies suggested that there is a high chance to have liquid water, and thus a potentially high chance to even maybe have life of some sorts, but other studies would suggest the opposite. These planets would be kind of barren and potentially contain nothing. Not even the atmosphere. With both types of studies usually having quite a lot of mathematical evidence, but no observational evidence. Mostly because the observational evidence was definitely lacking. Just to give you an example, here is exactly what these observations looked like back in 2018 when some of these planets were discovered. We're basically just looking at a tiny few pixels changing in brightness. And so to try to improve this, the star system was chosen as one of the first candidates for the James Webb Space Telescope. It actually did some initial observations back in June-July of 2022, and we also discussed some of the initial analysis and some of the initial discoveries in one of the previous videos from a few months ago. But it wasn't until this paper that you can find in the description below that we finally have a definitive confirmation of TRAPPIST-1b, the closest planet to the star that definitely receives more heat than Venus, but a lot less heat than Mercury. And since in the solar system Venus contains an extremely thick atmosphere, yet Mercury contains none, trying to figure out what's happening around this planet was a somewhat important mystery to solve. Would it be more like Mercury, or would it be more like Venus? And because it was also much closer to the star, it was also a lot easier to study. Here's actually what one of the previous models of this planet looked like, with a lot of scientists assuming that it probably does have a very thick atmosphere like Venus. And if it had a thick atmosphere, it would then be possible to study the atmosphere directly by looking at all of the light passing in front of the atmosphere during these twilight periods that you see right here. But because this planet is about 40 times closer to the star than Mercury is to our Sun, Whenever the star flares up, and it does so very often, this planet also receives a huge amount of charged particles, which in theory can actually strip this planet of pretty much everything on the surface, including any possibility for water or any atmosphere. 
As a matter of fact, some of these flares observed from similar stars can be hundreds of times more powerful than anything from our own sun. And by being so close to the star, these planets risk losing everything from the surface. Which seems to be precisely what the scientists have recently discovered. There's nothing here. This planet is completely barren. And seems to be extremely mercury-like. With the surface temperature of about 230 degrees Celsius. Which is slightly less than the day temperature on the surface of Mercury. And that's of course expected because Mercury does receive a little bit more illumination from the Sun. But despite this somewhat negative discovery, it's really the technique in this case that's particularly impressive. Especially because now it can be applied to six other planets, including planets around other similar stars. And this technique is known as secondary eclipse light curve. It essentially involves two things. Looking at starlight, and then looking at starlight plus light from the planet. And that's of course because the planet itself also reflects some of the starlight producing a little bit of its own illumination. And specifically because of the temperatures involved, it produces infrared light visible by the James Webb Space Telescope. And so by looking at this star in the mid-infrared frequencies, and by collecting just enough data to analyze this, the data analysis revealed that once in a while, the brightness changed by about 0.1% or approximately one one thousandth of the total brightness of the star. And that's because the planet was also producing just a little bit of light visible by the James Webb. But only visible for about 9.7 minutes as the planet passed in just the right region. In other words, because of these extremely periodic changes in brightness, the only possible explanation was that it was caused by this particular planet as it reflected some of the light coming from the star. And it happened twice per orbit with all of these observations only taking about 3 hours. And that's because a single orbit here is only about 36 hours. And so by subtracting the brightness of the star from the total brightness received, they were then able to determine the total brightness produced by the planet. And by combining this with several different models, they were then able to reproduce exactly what was observed. If there was some kind of an atmosphere here, the total heat would be much lower. Mostly because the atmosphere tends to distribute the heat more evenly. But dark surface, no atmosphere, and no heat distribution produces almost exactly what was observed. Almost definitively implying that this is a Mercury-like planet with no atmosphere, very dark surface, scorched by the star for billions of years, and potentially resembling Mercury almost one to one. But because we know Mercury has quite a lot of water deposits in darker regions, and because this planet is assumed to be tidally locked to the star as well, we have absolutely no idea what's happening on the far side of this planet, the side that's never facing the star, and the side that could have, in theory, accumulated a lot of deposits, including potentially water ice. But that's not something we can determine anytime soon. With the only conclusive observations suggesting that there is definitely no planetary atmosphere, including CO2, oxygen, or any other element that could potentially produce greenhouse effects, with maybe only a very, very small exosphere present on the surface of this planet, with this exosphere being created by the interaction with the highly charged particles coming from the star. Kind of similar to what Mercury has, and even a lot of other smaller objects that often contain no actual atmosphere. But for many scientists, none of this comes as a surprise. Previous observations from the Hubble telescope or from the infrared Spitzer telescope have pretty much discovered the same. There does not seem to be atmosphere around this planet, or actually around other planets as well. But whether other planets, including D, E, and F, the ones that are in the habitable zone, contain anything exciting, is not something we can answer just yet. Nevertheless, this is a major breakthrough for the ability of James Webb to directly gather information about terrestrial planets orbiting red dwarfs. And so this technique will very likely be applied to other planets very soon. But we're not going to know this until maybe later this year. The follow-up observations are only planned for June of 2023, and so at the moment we only have preliminary observations, but by the end of 2023, the James Webb might finally reveal exactly what's happening around the entire star system. We may finally know what's happening around TRAPPIST-1 system, and find out if any of these planets have any chance to sustain life of any kind. At the moment, the answer seems to be no, but we've discussed this in some of the previous videos you can find in the description. Nevertheless, because these planets and these stars are so common in the Milky Way, these are actually extremely important studies in helping us understand if life can indeed evolve somewhere else around an entirely different star system that seems to contain somewhat similar planets. But I guess more answers later this year.
Until then, check out the links in the description below, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt featuring the James Webb Space Telescope as well, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.